Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to my lesson on using 3D in After Effects. Let's take a look at an example. Here's one I made earlier. You can see we've got lots of 2D footage items, so they're all photographs, and the camera's moving through them in 3D space. This is what we call 2.5D, so you've got 2D elements in a 3D space. So I'm going to show you how to make this scene. All of the footage items that you need to make, it will be linked underneath this video on YouTube. Before you watch this lesson, make sure that you've watched my introduction to After Effects and my lessons on wiggle, adjustment layers, motion blur, and masks. So we're going to be using all of those different techniques in this lesson. So let's get started. Let's jump over to our lesson composition. First off, I'm going to bring in this background image. and I'm going to press S for scale. And I'm going to scale it down like so. Make sure it fits the composition. And I'm going to start bringing in all of my different fish. So I'm going to start off with this lots of fish, I think. And I'm going to scale that down. I'm going to bring in my lobster next and put that on top of my lots of fish. Press S so that I can scale it down. I'm going to stick that one down here. Next up, I'm going to bring in my fish 2. Press S, scale that down. So that's something like that. And next up, I'm going to bring in my fish small. I might shrink that down ever so slightly. And then I'm going to bring in my jellyfish. That's going to need to be shrunk down quite a bit, I think. There we go. I'll leave that there. So I'm going to select all of my layers and press S again to hide the scale parameter. And the next thing we need to do is enable 3D on all the layers that we want to be in the 3D space. Now we don't want the background to be in 3D. If we look at my example, we'll see that the background doesn't scale in 3D. It's just the elements on top of it, because that's our background. We don't really want that to be in 3D. So we're going to make everything 3D except the background by clicking on the 3D space in the 3D column. But before we can see any of these items in 3D, we need to create a camera. You can't see 3D items unless there's a camera in your composition. If you've ever tried to use 3D in After Effects and it hasn't worked, it's probably because you haven't had a camera in the scene. So I'm going to right click and go new camera. And you get a few options. I'm going to enable depth of field here. The default is that that's off, but that basically makes things more blurry depending on how close they are to the lens. I'm going to click OK. And next up, we need to arrange our items in 3D space. This is where it's really useful to change the view from one view to two views. You can see we've got our 3D view here. This is the camera, and that's its kind of viewport. That's what it sees. We need to arrange our different footage items in 3D space, so there's some space between them. This is along what's called the Z axis. So we've got X and Y up and down, left and right. But the Z axis is depth, so it's how much space there is between things in 3D space. You only get the z-axis once things are 3D. So we want the jellyfish to be closest to the camera. So I'm going to click on that. And I can use these arrows here in the top-down view to pull the jellyfish closer and closer to the camera. So something like that. And you can see it's changing here in this window. Next up, I want to move the fish small, closer to the camera, but not quite as close as the jellyfish. Next, I'm going to make fish small too, a little bit closer. I'm going to leave the lobster where it is. And I'm going to move lots of fish behind the lobster. So maybe quite a bit behind. So something like that. So there's now quite a bit of space in between all of our items. Next up, we're going to start animating our camera. So I'm going to click on our camera and just fold it down to see what different types of options we've got. 
We're going to look at the transform options and we're going to be animating the position. So we're going to animate the position of the camera. So we need to click on the stopwatch, make sure that we're at the beginning of our animation, click the stopwatch and we can begin animating the position. Now the best way to move the camera isn't to move it here in the top down view, it's to use one of the camera options up here. So this is the camera menu. It defaults to the unified camera tool, but we're going to use something called track Z camera tool, or track Z if you're in America. And we use this to move through Z space. This won't affect X and Y and it won't affect the rotation. Let's just have a go with this. We've clicked the stopwatch, so we need to move through time. Let's have a go at moving through Z space. So I'm just left clicking with the track Z tool. I'm just dragging upwards. So you can see we're gradually moving through Z space, like so. And now we've got an animation moving through Z space. I think at the beginning, I'd like to maybe zoom out a little bit so we can see all of our elements. So we can start somewhere like that. We're gradually moving through all of this space until we get to the back. So our camera position is moving through Z space. But I think I'd also like to orbit the camera a little bit. So I'm going to select X, Y, and Z rotation. And I'm going to grab what's called the orbit camera tool and just spin the camera around a little bit. So it starts at this angle. And then at the end, it will move gradually back into place. Or we could do the opposite. We could keep it completely straight on to begin with, like that, and then have it curve round as it moves through space. So something like that. So we've just got a bit of 3D rotation as well. And you can keep tweaking that until it looks the way you want. So we'll move through one object there. There we go. So I think I'm happy with that. I'm going through the jellyfish. And next up, I think I want to actually make these 2D elements move position. So I'm just going to press U to collapse all that stuff in the camera. And I'm going to select all of my fish and press P. Click on the stopwatch and then move through time. And we're going to have to do this from the top down view so that we can see what we're doing. So I'm going to click on my jellyfish first. I think I might want my jellyfish to move to the left a little bit. I want my fish small to move to the right a bit. I want my fish small too to also move to the right. So I'm just grabbing the X arrow here. That's the red one. Uh, let's see. My lobster, I think that can move to the right as well. And my lots of fish, they can move in this direction. So let's see how that's changed our animation. You can see that now all the elements are moving. Our scene looks quite a lot more dynamic and interesting. And we're getting that nice pan all the way through. So what else did I do on my example animation? Let's go back to our camera and just fold it down and get all of our transformation options. If you watch my wiggle tutorial, you'll know how to make the position of something wiggle. Well, if you want to create camera shake or camera wobble, the best way to do that is to put wiggle on the point of interest. You don't want to wiggle the camera itself. You want to wiggle this thing here, the point of interest, the thing that the camera is looking at. If that's wobbling, it will make your whole shot look like it's wobbling. So let's alt click on the point of interest. And I'm going to type wiggle parentheses 0.25 comma 100. So it's wiggling 0.25 times a second within 100 pixels. And then I'm going to click outside. And if we watch now, we should have a really nice subtle wobble on our shot, which makes it look like our camera's moving through water and going up against a bit of water resistance. So let's just run preview that. There you go. So a nice wobbly shot. So 
So next up, I want to create a vignette to go over the top. So I'm going to create a new solid layer. I'm going to make it black, click OK. And I'm going to double click on the ellipse tool to make an elliptical mask. If this seems unfamiliar, make sure you've watched my masking tutorial. I'm going to click to invert it. I'm going to make the opacity much lower, something like 60. I'm going to bump up the mask expansion so it only fills the corners. I'm going to feather it. I'm going to feather it quite a lot so it's really diffuse. So we've got a nice vignette around the edge of our composition, which helps to add to this underwater feel. And just like in my adjustment layers tutorial, I'm going to create an adjustment layer. And I'm going to put some effects on that. So first off, I'm going to put Turbulent Displace. Drag that on to the adjustment layer. And I'm going to make it evolve once. So again, if this is unfamiliar, check out my adjustment layers tutorial. So it's going to evolve once. And I think I'm going to turn the size down quite a lot the amount down quite a bit too. So there we go, we've got some displacement there. I'm going to put a blue tint on the whole thing. So it's blue wash, and again we want to put that on the adjustment layer. There we go. And last of all, I'm going to create another solid layer. I'm going to make it white this time. And I'm going to apply some bubbles to it. So we've got CC bubbles, just drag that onto the white solid. There we go. I'm going to drag that underneath the adjustment layer so that we've got all of those effects applied to it. And I think I'm going to press T and reduce the opacity so that those bubbles are much more subtle. So there we go. So we've now got a 3D scene with a wiggling point of interest. Z depth, we've got a vignette. And we've got some bubbles over the top. Let's just do a RAM preview of that. So there we go. We've got a really nice animation of fish moving through water. So why not download the assets and have a go yourself? And I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Colouring and Activity Book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.